بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوة الا بالله الذي رضیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و صلی الله علی سیدنا و نبینا ابی القاسم المصطفى محمد و آله الطیبین الطاهرین لا سیما و قیت الله فی الارضین اجل الله تعالی فرجه الشریف اللهم اخرجنی من ظلمات الفن و اکرمنی من هو الفن اللهم افتح علينا ابواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزاه ونعوذ بك برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين ان شاء الله tonight we study another discussion from al-mizan and this is about risala about prophethood and revelation or mission and revelation and this is at the end of alama's discussion about miracles you remember the last point we said was that miracles are given to the prophets to prove their mission. Miracles are not to prove, for example, uh, Islamic uh, doctrines like existence of God or unity of God or prophethood in general or resurrection, etc. Although sometimes we can benefit from this for those things as well but the main reason for giving a messenger uh, some miracles is because there were people who questioned their mission and appointment by God they said why God chose you why God didn't send angels has God ever chosen a human being things like this or why God didn't choose someone who is powerful and rich. So miracles were in the first place to prove that this person is sent by God. So now, because of this, Allama has a discussion about mission and revelation. And he says, he makes few points. One of the points is that what a messenger or prophet, Rasul or Nabi, he said many times that every Rasul is Nabi, but not every Nabi is Rasul. Yeah, so there are 124,000 Nabi prophet, but not 124,000 Rasul. Rasul are only 330. And these were given a special mission, message. Prophets many times preached what was given to a Rasul. So they didn't have always their own message. But they all received revelation. So they had infallible understanding of message of God for their people. Anyway, Allah says what messengers or prophets in general receive through revelation and therefore the knowledge that they have is different from what we understand through our senses or through our aql min ghayr sinkh ma najiduhu bi hawasina wa aqulina this is different from what we understand through seeing hearing or thinking because unfortunately uh, different times different people have tried sometimes to say prophets were like us but they were very clever they were very genius they were you know very uh, much understanding and they tried to help people but it was not that something especially was given to them by God Allah says Al-Wahyu ghayr al saib Revelation is different from thinking which has hit the truth, which has now reached reality. Say, so, okay, this person was thinking and he has managed to find good things. So this is why he became prophet. Allah said this decades before he passed away because this is the first volume of Al-Mizan. 
and he is 40 years now, uh, you know, he has de de departed from this world 40 years ago. But many years after him, actually, these things uh, were said, you know, by some people in uh, Iran and then outside Iran uh, about revelation and, you know, prophetic experience, etc. In the time of Allama, also some people had mentioned this, but in a different way. So always you find people saying different things. Ayatollah Mutahari also in his book Vahyu Nubuvat has a discussion about this. So he says revelation is different from uh, successful thinking. And whoever reads the Quran finds out very clearly that when we talk about revelation, we are talking about something different, something which has different nature. It's another way of understanding. Because we have not experienced that, then we have difficulty in understanding. Uh, those of you who have studied uh, the course on understanding the Quran, or if you have studied my paper on uh, revelation as understood by Muslims, I have mentioned characteristics of revelation in that course and that paper. So Allah says some of the people in this age, uh, they have uh, unfortunately missed the Quranic position and they have tried to build teachings of Islam and religious facts based on sciences, natural sciences, based on physics and chemistry, as if these are the only ways for us to understand realities. For example, some people have said that human understanding is all because of certain things that uh, happen in brain. You know, we don't deny the role of brain. Certainly brain is very important. Eyes, ears, all are important. But understanding is not by brain. Knowledge is not by brain. Brain prepares, it's an instrument, but understanding is by the soul. Some people have said, no, it's just a matter of some chemicals that are produced, for example, in the brain, etc. So they have tried to reduce revelation into something physiochemical. Or, for example, they said, Nobuva is Nobug, a type of Nobug. Nobug means to be genius. So they thought Ambiya were very clever people. But it's not that they received a special communication from God. They try to find ways to help people. Uh, maybe some times, you know, they themselves didn't know that this is not <laughs> coming from God, according to these people. Uh, they were, you know, understanding certain things and they were thinking maybe by mistake that this is coming from God, but it was their own thinking. This is the way, you know, these people say. They wanted to build civilization, to help people, to save people. They gave them some uh, ethical rules, some social principles. Then they gave them some uh, devotional acts, some acts of worship to help them build a community. So according to them, there are few points. Allah summarizes um, their ideas. One, An-Nabi insanun mutafakkirun nabighun. According to these people, a prophet is a genius person who is a thinker and a reformer who wants to help his people to reform their society. Number two, for them, revelation is 
formation of good thoughts in the mind of prophets without any special connection with God. Just some good ideas. You know, some people say, oh, these people were very clever. They managed to, you know, change millions of people because they were very intelligent, for example, like this. Point three, divine books are collections of these good thoughts and free from selfish teachings. So the prophets, according to these people, were good people, but not sent by God. Point four, angels that are mentioned in these scriptures. They are just some natural powers that run this world or some psychological or psychic powers that they help human beings. Even, for example, when it comes to Ruhul Qudus, the Holy Spirit, they say Ruhul Qudus is also one dimension of human spirit. And instead of inspiration, uh, Allah says they say, uh, these good ideas just are pouring down from them, you know, coming down from them. And when it comes to Satan, also they say Satan is also a one dimension in human soul from which bad thoughts come. So Holy Spirit, which is responsible for inspirations, is inside human spirit. Satan, which is also uh, for responsible for temptation, is inside us, according to these people. So, anything else like law, kalam, arsh, kursi, kitab, hesab, jannah, wannar, they explain it in this way. You know, Quran talks about law, law mahfuz, yeah, like a preserved tablet. Uh, there is ash, divine throne. There is kursi, chair. Mizan, a scale. Heaven, hell. Everything they try to explain it in a materialistic way. The fifth point that they mention is that religions follow and are subordinate to the requirements of their own times. Judaism was for certain time, Christianity for certain time, Islam for certain time, but we should not think Islam or Christianity or Judaism are forever without any change. With, a, with the change of time and era, they can be updated. This is also one aspect, because there's nothing divine here, you know. <laughs> Point six, mu'jizat, miracles that are reported from the prophets are either fabricated, according to them, or they were distorted. So there was some reality, but you know, maybe they exaggerated, they added things to this in order to keep people, lay people, you know, uh, interested and, you know, make them believe. So Allah says, this is uh, a summary of, you know, these um, ideas. And Allah says, if this is revelation and this is mission, so it's better to call it it's a political game than being a religion. It's not a religion. And he says, we don't want to go into, into a detailed discussion about this, but briefly what we can say is that divine books, not only Quran, even Torah, Angel, the Bible, Quran in particular, uh, sayings of the prophets, in particular saying of our prophet, 
they don't match and comply with this kind of <coughs> interpretation. These people, maybe because of their own attachment to this world and physical and material elements and factors, they have denied supernatural world. These people you're talking about, were, were they a specific group? Yeah. What were they called? Like, who were they? No. Different people, different writers. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ayatollah Mutahari mentions one person from Iran, one person from Pakistan. Uh, but after the revolution, also some other people were added to them. And some of them were religious, but they had these ideas. I don't want to mention names, so we keep it this much. So he says they denied ma wara at tabia somehow, or but they are not all at the same degree. Some of them are very religious, some of them less religious. And Allah says that these are the things that more or less we have always had these things. And he says then we have also some people that uh, tried to explain religious texts in, a, in an honest way with preservation of the facts which are there without reducing everything to natural causes and natural laws. And then he has a brief discussion uh, that those who study philosophy of religion, they are familiar with, and that is what we call language of religion. It's a discussion in Christianity, Judaism, Islam. So, Allama says one of the rules that we have to remember is that all these linguistic expressions that we have, about wahy, about mizan, about kitab, about a scale, about arsh, law, kalam, all these things. We have to keep these terms within the framework of that language. For example, in the case of Quran, it's Arabic. Allah spoke Arabic, yeah, and Allah spoke a language that people were able to understand. Allah didn't send any messenger unless that messenger spoke to his people the same language that they, they used to speak. And in the case of Quran, clear Arabic language. You cannot play with you know these words and grammar of language and you know interpret it in the way that you prefer you have to keep it within arabic language grammar you know uh, terminology has to be arabic the maximum you can do is if there is a proof that something cannot be taken literally, then you extend the meaning to include supernatural things as well. For example, in the Quran we have Yadullah Fawqa'idihim. What does it mean Yadullah Fawqa'idihim? Allah's hand is above their hands. Everyone who knows Arabic understands the meaning of this sentence. You cannot interpret it in the way that Arabs don't understand. But you can say, because Allah doesn't have physical body, and the Quran says, His hand is not like our hand. He doesn't have physical hand. Yeah? But then you cannot say, for example, hand means knowledge. 
because no Arab has used hand for knowledge, because hand is not for knowledge. You can say it means Allah's power. Yeah? And again, you understand that there is a beauty in saying, Yadullah fuqaidiyam. If Allah had said Allah's power is above their power, it didn't, you know, sit in the, you know, heart like this one. These are all rhetorics or the old skills of Balagha that we use this. So, in such cases, we say, okay, definitely doesn't mean physical hand. Or, for example, Allah says, Ja Rabbuka wal Malaku, Safan Safan. Your Lord came along with angels in roads. Certainly, we know that Ja here doesn't mean. Allah came like a human being. A human being when he comes or she comes means has to leave a place and come to a new place. Yeah? But when we say Ja'arabuka, Allah is not leaving any place and then coming to another place. He has no space. He's the creator of space. So Ja'arabuka means the command of your Lord came. Ja'amrabuka. Okay, these are all compatible with Arabic language. Indeed, uh, eloquent speakers of Arabic, they do lots of these things. But, all together changing everything and say, uh, miracles were just, you know, physical, natural things, or, you know, wah, it was nothing except thinking. God didn't send any book, any uh, revelation. This is too much. So you are not uh, leaving anything from Quran or Torah or Angel, etc. And then Allah says something very important in his book, Usul Falsafe wa Rabeshir Alis. He expands on this. And please remember this, it helps you in many places. Allah says, okay, you are interested in natural sciences. In my words, you know, I'm putting this way. You are interested in natural sciences? Okay, enjoy it. We don't deny it. We also, you know, are uh, happy with that. Allah himself, you know, was a great <coughs> person in different sciences, including medicine, you know, other things. But a person who is expert in natural sciences he can talk about existence or non-existence of the subjects which are relevant to his discipline. Yeah? So if you are only talking about physical, material things, then you can say whether this physical thing exists or this physical thing doesn't exist or I have doubt. But you cannot talk about something which is not physical. It's like if someone has a, you know, some glasses that are only able to see certain color. Suppose you have glasses that can you only see green things. You cannot say there is no, nothing red because I cannot see anything red. Or there is nothing blue because I cannot see anything. Your filter doesn't allow you to judge about other things. So even if you are the best chemist or uh, physicist, you cannot say angels don't exist. Yes, if we say angels are physical beings, you can say to the best of our knowledge, we have not yet been able to find angels. You cannot say they don't exist. Maybe they exist in some part of the world that you have not been there. Yeah, but you can say, so far I haven't been able to identify it. But when we say angel is immaterial, you cannot say anything about it. In the same way that a philosopher cannot talk about, you know, physical things. Yeah, a philosopher cannot say, for example, you know, uh, coronavirus exists or doesn't exist as a philosopher, 
because philosopher only talks about kulliyat. Yeah? They cannot talk about particular things. A philosopher cannot say today whether it was cold or warm or moderate. Yeah? So, those who have interest in material sciences, they be, should be careful not to impose their own ways of verification on other disciplines. This is very important. He says it's like, for example, someone who is expert in Elmul and then wants to talk about astronomy, for example. With Elmul you cannot talk about astronomy. <laughs> Okay, Alhamdulillah, this discussion ended, and then Allama starts with bayan of some other verses. So discussion finished. So we had two sessions on miracles, and then end of that was a discussion about uh, mission and revelation. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.